Welcome to Statics. Equilibrium of a rigid body in three dimensions. Now we expand equilibrium of a rigid body from two dimensions to three dimensions. The basic principles are still the same. For static equilibrium of a rigid body, all forces must be balanced to prevent translation of the member, and all moments must be balanced to prevent rotation of the member. In other words, all the forces both applied forces and reaction forces, must sum to zero. And all applied moments and reaction moments, when summed about any arbitrary point, must sum to zero. When applied to three dimensions, we will have three force equilibrium equations and three moment equilibrium equations. Ultimately, we will have up to six independent equations of equilibrium, and therefore, since our problems are statically determinate, we will have up to six unknowns in our problems. Three-dimensional equilibrium problems are very manageable, regardless of complexity, when using Cartesian vector notation. A general procedure, which works for all situations, will be shown in a later video. Let's now consider supports and support reactions for three-dimensional structures. Let's review the basic principles for determining support reactions. These principles apply to both two- and three-dimensional supports. First, a reaction force is developed by a support that restricts the translation or linear motion of the attached member. In other words, if the support prevents the member from moving in, say, the x direction, then we will have a reaction force acting in that direction. Second, a reaction moment is developed when rotation of the attached member about the support point is prevented. In other words, if the support prevents the member from rotating about it, then a moment reaction will act at the support. Let's look at some examples. The following three-dimensional supports and reactions images were taken from the textbook Engineering Mechanics Statics, 14th edition by R.C. Hibbler. Note that these are idealized supports and may not truly represent supports in reality. Idealized supports neglect friction, deformation, and wear that can occur in real supports. The first three supports shown a cable support, smooth surface support, and a roller support are the same as their two-dimensional equivalents. The only difference is that the reaction forces are in 3D space. They each produce a single reaction force. For the cable, the reaction force is in the direction of the cable. For the smooth surface support and roller support, the reaction force is normal to the supporting surface. A ball and socket joint is unique to three dimensions. The support prevents translation in all directions but does not restrain rotation of the member about the support. A single reaction force could represent the support reaction. However, for analysis, it is convenient to break the reaction force into its three-dimensional components, so we model it as three reaction forces. No reaction moments occur. Journal and thrust bearings are also unique to three dimensions. First, let's consider a round bar supported by a single journal bearing. The bearing allows the bar to rotate about its long axis and to translate or slide along its axis through the bearing. However, the bearing prevents translation perpendicular to the axis of the bar. Note that it also prevents rotation of the bar about axes perpendicular to the bar axis. It produces a total of four unknown support reactions. A single journal bearing supporting a rectangular bar is similar, except that the bearing prevents rotation of the bar about its axis. Therefore, the bearing forms two reaction forces perpendicular to the bar axis and three reaction moments for a total of five unknown support reactions. A single thrust bearing supporting a round bar is similar to a single journal bearing supporting a round bar, except that the thrust bearing prevents translation of the bar through the bearing along its axis but it does permit the bar to rotate about its axis. Therefore, a single thrust bearing produces three reaction forces and two reaction moments for a total of five unknown support reactions. A single hinge supporting a member can be viewed as equivalent to a single thrust bearing in terms of the support reactions formed. Note that in the previous discussion on bearings, I was careful to state that the number of support reactions was based on a single bearing or hinge supporting a member. If a member is supported by two or more bearings or hinges, 
along the member's axis, or a bearing and some other support that restricts translation perpendicular to the member axis. Then the combined translation reactions of the two supports together prevent rotation of the member, and the moment reactions of the individual supports, identified in red, are ignored. An idealized pin support in three dimensions restricts translation in all directions, so it produces three reaction forces. The support permits rotation of the member about the pin, but prevents rotation about the two axes perpendicular to the axis of the pin. Therefore, it forms a total of five support reactions. Last, a fixed support in three dimensions restricts translation in all three directions and rotation of the member about all three axes at the support, resulting in three reaction forces and three reaction moments for a total of six unknowns.